Westernizing model. Came up with the name Tico. Some stuff with it now. Um, then uh, we had the code in the CDS system at some point, and it's been moved around, and uh, it's now on our own server. And as you may know, GPO is written in Python and C, but it used to be actually C++, but we also skipped that at some point. And the documentation used to be in a, in a, in a wiki, actually. But now we're using the Sphinx system that everybody in the Python world is using. And we were also using uh, several of these uh, array packages in Python, so if you're familiar with those. We use them all as they switch one to over the other as well. And this is sort of uh, the, the number of lines we have. <coughs> so you can see that this is probably all the, the Finnish people here. You can see they're a little bit slow, but then they catch on. <laughs> and we have lots of them. So you can see that it's nice to see that there's actually tests and documentation also. <laughs> That's very nice. And more numbers. We actually have 4,000 hours of uh, tests that we run every weekend on uh, Niflheim. And Niflheim has something like uh, 6,000 hours or something. So it sounds like a lot of hours, but it, it's, if we do all, take all of Niflheim, it's just one hour a week. Of course, some of the tests take a whole day, and some tests uh, depend on other tests. So it takes two hours to complete all of it, but uh, it's not that we occupy the time uh, for the time for these, these tests. Uh, and, and this graph here shows the most important thing that uh, people can actually publish uh, new results based on the code. So this is an old. Uh, Picture from an archive log. Uh, that's what the web page looked like in 2004. You can see it's really early days. Uh, it doesn't work really at all, but it uh, sort of works. But, uh, and at that point, we actually had, uh, we had 14 PAW setups for 14 elements, and uh, none of them were transitioned. The download page you can see we were using Python 2.2 and MC 08 and numeric. The good old days. So that, that, that was sort of the history. You are welcome to interrupt if you have a question along the way. So now we're going to move to PAW setups. So, um, one of the big challenges, uh, so this is the work that Marshall and I, and I have been doing in the last uh, several years, I think. Um, one of our biggest problems is to have good benchmarks that we can compare to. Uh, and uh, we want them to be uh, challenging. I mean, it's, it turns out it's just not enough to do a molecule and then see what is the problem and how ah, this looks correct. So it's probably a good uh, description of the, this atom. And, and volumes for bugs and solids is not a challenging test at all. So something like cohesive entities, that's much better, but uh, we don't want, want to do atoms with uh, several codes because it's just uh, not fun to do atoms. So we are looking for something simpler. So Martin also found the, the structures for all oxides, but those are big systems and uh, Really painful to work. And these are the, the codes that uh, Martin now masters. Uh, both of them are all electron codes, full potential, everything, but they are still very different in the way they do their thing. So if we can get the same numbers with those two, we are quite happy. That's still a, a challenge. So this is our strategy. Um, so we try to do something simple, so we just pick FCC for all elements and then we optimize the volume, it's not magnetic or anything. And then we also do rock salt structure for all elements, where we have this element X and oxygen. So two atoms in the unit cells, it's really simple. 
So we optimize the model with uh, this names code and check the metric that it's the same. So that's our uh, set of benchmark systems. And it's, it's important to do non-relativistic calculations because they, the two codes do it a little bit different. So this we can initially do when we generate the setup that does not add any relativistic corrections and uh, then the hope is that if you add the data it's not a big change. So now uh, our reference systems are these FCC and rock source structures so we can calculate the uh, rock side formation of these. We can also take the structures and compress them to 90% of the last response and that gives a couple of EVs uh, energy cost something. Uh, so those are also something you can calculate these two codes. And it's important to do a, a big compression because otherwise it's just not challenging enough for the PW setup. And it's very good to have these very fast iterators so we can iterate on the setup parameters fast because it's extremely boring work. Uh, <laughs> because uh, you make some new parameters and then the tests are done the next day, you've forgotten what you're doing. It used to be fast, and now we actually have some really fast tests. So, this is our little uh, goal of mine of uh, benchmark numbers. So, these compression energies and uh, the formation energies. <coughs> uh, so, you can see some of the formation energies are actually negative. They don't like this rock solid structure anyway, all of them, but uh, it's just a number. And this, um, these are, okay, let's look at the, the elk line. So that's the formation entities for elk compared to aims. So when I say they agree, that's, that's the kind of agreement I'm talking about. So you can see there are some that are not. This is what we're aiming for. It doesn't make sense to make something that's uh, better than the difference between it and aims. So, yeah. so this is uh, if somebody can maybe it's actually just a few that are, are quite off, like Lantern or something. So then you can see if we have the so this is the formation energy. From this rock short, yeah, those different points. Uh, yeah, so, zero so 08 is the zero 08 version of the GPOS package of the PW setups. Right. Okay. 09 is the one that's a year old. You can see the, the blue crosses, they are okay, but uh, there are some really bad ones also. And the 09 bundle of PW. The zero line does a lot better. See, it corrects these very bad ones here. Uh, and zero, uh, zero 010 is the new one we're working on where we have actually added the lanternites. And it's, well, you can argue we need to do much better since we don't really know this L or aims we are aiming for. Okay, so that was the formation and so what do L and H people say? Like, what do they do? Sorry? Well, what do the uh, A and L people say? Because they should get the same result as Yeah, that's <coughs> a good question. What's the um what the element around fifty five, fifty eight? This one? Uh -huh. This is Lantern. Ah, uh, sorry? Yeah. Lanzo. Lanzo. Yeah. Yeah, so that actually uh, got better. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, let's look at the, the real. Uh, Excuse me, is the setup, is the setup is specific to the functional? Yeah, we really, uh, typically generate a setup for each uh, functional. And these versions are also what you get when you use them on the fly? Is that sometimes what you need to do? Yeah. Okay. 
then you get to the get what you, you will get the performance and you don't download the package, you just produce them on the yeah, yeah. So these are some uh, absorption energies for some molecule atoms on a Ethereum surface. And this is some a calculation that we think is very good. And so here you can see for example the box is a nice and hydrogen. And that's this almost ruthenium clearly has a, a problem. Uh, it's quite off, it's in EV. It's much better here. Uh, some semicol states were added in this 09. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, the new one is even better. Uh, you cannot see anything if you look at this reaction here. Yes. Uh, if we go back and look at the
being able to set up some like some tests so you can see how to how to perform it. We're going to have to do these kind of tests to check our numbers. That's just the way it is, unfortunately. So these are something called the rhythmic derivatives, which says something about how is this atom scattered of states at a certain energy with a certain angular momentum. This is something you can easily calculate for an isolated atom. And uh, then you get all this getty here. And there's a full line that's for the all electron atom, and the last line is for our PW approximation. So this is at zero energy, so this is above vacuum. So normally you would say for ground state you just need something that's okay down here, but you see it's a mess up here at high energies, but this super duper setup with 16 electrons more projectors, it does a very good job. You can see also an actual calculation, it's, it seems to perform well. The only thing missing here is this blue line here, which is the F logarithmic derivative. Uh, here it's, it's actually, we choose the local potential to reproduce the correct scattering at zero energy, but we can also add the F projectors and maybe get this fixed completely. So I'm afraid that we, we will have to get used to this kind of thing. If you are doing something that is on top of the PD, like RPA correlation, then you want to get PD correct first. So, and you maybe want to check it all. RPA calculations for these things also. So uh, finally I'd like to say a little bit about the plane wave implementation because it's sort of it's not documented anywhere, it's sort of a secret, but it actually works uh, and it's really, really uh, efficient for small systems. And uh, for some applications you just need to get to the complete basis set limit and uh, this is very easy. And uh, it uses less memory and uh, some things are just simpler to do in simple space. So that's quite nice. And some applications can also not tolerate even a small inkbox doing photons or vibration so energies. This is just not existent in our brain wave calculations. We now have the stress tensor. And uh, with this uh, mode, you also saw the Poisson equation in the space. You can actually use that in SAO and uh, in finite difference mode also. So sometimes you're doing an SAO code, you can see that a lot of time is spent in this iterative multiplicate sort of the Poisson equation that we may want to choose. To do it in the circle space. And some more details. Uh, although it's written in Python, this stuff, it, it actually makes heavy use of these two libraries, the Blast library and the Tiba W. And uh, the only parameter you get is this cutoff energy. And this sort of says, uh, what is this cutoff uh, wave vector here? And that's the yellow uh, sphere here. Now it's in two dimensions here. So these are your wave vectors you include, plane waves you include. But then we have to uh, transform the wave function to real space where we calculate density and potential and so on. So then you zero pad this, this sphere up to the blue box here. And then you do this inverse FFT. And the grid size you, you go to in real space, you can actually control that with this H parameter that we used to use in the real, in the finite difference code. But you don't have to set this because it will be, this, this says this relation H equals to pi over G2. And G2 is the sphere that fits into the box here. That's actually uh, this default. Uh, choice here, which is a bit arbitrary and it could just be 1.5 or whatever. We chose this one, which I think is uh, something we inherited from the cable. And uh, you could argue that you should actually include twice as many 
the sphere here should be twice as big as the yellow, but that seems to be for several reasons that's not really needed, and it's important to keep this box, the blue box, as small as possible for efficiency, because that's where you need the FFTs back and forth. You don't need to set age, it's automatic, but we haven't played around with a lot with this product. And then uh, there's an additional grid, that's the big red one here, that's when you uh, interpolate density to an even finer grid to do exchange and correlation functionals and other stuff. And here it's hard code to go to a grid that has twice as many grid points, just as the final difference code. This is not an adjustable parameter, but with this FFT interplay you can choose whatever. So there are still some parameters you might like to choose, but it seems to work quite well. So this, this is the most important work in my uh, eyes for the future to get a good line of uh, setups and uh, a robust eigenshaw density mix to go. And uh, when we have that, we can make, make a one to zero conversion, which would be nice. And there are some other uh, important things that I'll skip for now because I have to move on. So I'll just talk a little bit about the first day. <coughs> the plan is to uh, look at, at the, how we write the tests and documentation. <coughs> Try to get the documentation tested actually. So typically when you write a documentation you have some scripts and some results and so on. And, and these things tend to rot with time. So it's important to have them tested. And we have a, have a complete framework for doing this in a nice way, so this will try to learn. So if you show up there, try to think about one of your uh, tutorials or what, something you've written that you can work on here on the first day. We'll also have some technical discussions, and if you have some input for what you want to discuss on Thursday, please uh, let me know. And every developer or one of the developers, of course, welcome. So this is sort of a plan, but we can change it, of course. I would very much like to hear what you would like to discuss on the first day. So I'll stop here and uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions.
Yeah, so that's the possibility, I guess, to have two levels of sets of, 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 of setups. Maybe this uh, 16 electron plus plus is what we need, but maybe not everybody is interested in it. It's a bit challenging. It sounds a bit technical. I think maybe it's it's more suited for a, for a lunch or later. I think. If, did you have a meeting? I think I talked you. You know, but if you don't have a question, I have a special question. When you go to these plus plus solutions, what, what's the just the rough? How how bad does it go in terms of speed? So we you know we compare less than our hour to hours. So basically, the meter. So you go from. What's the performance cost? And does that vary with scale? You go from eight to sixteen electrons. Yeah. So that will double the, the time it takes. Uniformly without it doesn't it, that doesn't affect it, it's a feedback. Yeah, well done. Because uh, yeah, I would say it's uh, sort of talks. Of course if it's very big then it's uh, it's four times uh, slower. Going to the regime where orthogonalization of your wave function is limiting you, then you're probably not doing that big systems. And then, of course, there are more projectors, so that also scales uh, linearly with the number of projector functions. So it's not too bad. I think we have to, uh, to stop here with the questioning and then uh, move on with the program. We're a bit behind. Uh, but let's give the uh, soft.